Today we're going to be talking about my budget for cruising on Enchanted Princess on September 14th, 2024. I am going to be traveling alone, so we're going to be going through my budget for what the cruise fare costs, travel costs, incidentals, dining, all of them. Let's get started. Hi, AJ here from Bite Size Cruises. Today we're going to talk all about my budget for my upcoming cruise on the Enchanted Princess. Now, for this cruise, I am traveling alone and I am traveling on an inside cabin. Last time I traveled on Princess, I was in an ocean view. It was a lovely cabin, but this time I'm gonna see what it's like to be in an inside cabin. I do really like inside cabins. Um, contrary to what a lot of people think, I think they're kind of cozy and lovely. So, traveling in an inside cabin, my cruise fare came out to $1,844. Just about even. Now. That does seem like a lot for an inside cabin. However, that includes Princess Plus. So what Princess Plus gets you is your Wi-Fi to um, casual dining, not specialty dining, casualty dining credits, uh, two specialty desserts a day, and unlimited specialty beverages. Uh, for alcoholic beverages, you are still limited by the 13-day cap. I don't personally drink, but I like to get coffees and soft drinks and so that is included in that as well and then it also covers all of your gratuities so i won't have a daily gratuity cost at the end of the trip because that's all rolled up in that princess plus as they say it pays the plus um, so that was all included in that total fare cost so that is a big win especially with the wi-fi and gratuities being in there it was well worth it now, also included in there was being able to have the medallion shipped to my house, which is normally a $10 fee, but is included in Princess Plus. I did go ahead and customize my medallion so that it has an image of the ship on it, which I just thought was really cute as I, you know, cruise more and collect more medallions. Maybe I'll do a cute display with them someday. So that was $5 to get that customized, which really isn't bad. I love the medallions, but that is a video for another day. Now, to get to the cruise, that cost is fairly low when you think of traveling to cruises. I am going to New York to get the cruise and I live just outside of Philadelphia. So what my plan is, is my husband's gonna drive me up to one of the Jersey train stations that's a little further north. I'm gonna get the train there and take NJ Transit right up to Penn Station in New York. That trip each way is about, is $18.65. So that times two, it's like 37, 12 um, to get up there. So not a whole lot of cost, but there is a small cost for getting up there because I'm not driving up and being dropped off. Uh, well worth the money to not have to drive in New York traffic, if you ask my opinion. And also I won't have the parking fees this way. Uh, next up on board the ship, what I did go ahead and do is I have two specialty dining uh, that I have already purchased. One is for the Crown Grill, and that was $45 per person per for dinner, which I think is very affordable. Um, as far as specialty dining goes, sometimes those can be really high. This one, you know, I'm looking forward to that. And then the second was the 360 experience. This is a newer offering that is not on every ship. So when I saw it on the Enchanted Princess, I had to do it. It is interactive, it looks wonderful, and that was $150 a person. Uh, so I did go ahead and book that. And then that's really everything on board the ship that I am expecting to spend. I don't really buy many much as far as ship memorabilia goes. Um, I do have a sticker and souvenir budget of $50. My family really loves stickers. They're big sticker fans, so I do try to get them something in every port, but that $50 budget allows me to make sure that the incidentals I'm likely to run into are covered. And then, like I said, I keep my souvenir budget low. So adding in that 50, and then lastly, I am not doing very many excursions this trip at all, um, where I'm going to a lot of ports that I've already been to before and done some of the bigger excursions on. So what I am planning to do this time is mainly do some history research, see what I wanna go look at, 
but I'm not planning to pay much for visiting anywhere. Um, none of the places I want to visit actually have a cost. I want to see the botanical gardens in um, Halifax again, but you know, for the most part, it's just kind of walking around. So the one thing that I am spending some money on there is a Bar Harbor wa historic walking tour. Normally that is $15. It is currently on sale for $13.50 via Viator. So that is what I am spending for that. All in all, that keeps my overall cruise budget pretty low. Right now, everything totaled up. I am at $21.98. 8.8 <laughs> so 21.99 um so you know we'll round make it easy about 2200 dollars uh, is what it you know costs for me to go on enchanted princess on a seven day cruise as far as vacations go that's really not bad um especially paying double occupancy I, there was no uh, travel agent discount this isn't a free cruise or anything like that that is all straight up cost what anybody could pay for an inside cabin um and that's really it if you do have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments below we would love to answer any questions you have if you need clarity on anything if you want me to break anything down further happy to answer them just you know shoot us an email or leave them in the comments uh, as always if you have enjoyed this video please like and subscribe it really helps the channel out also, we have a brand new channel, uh, Bite Size Travel, that's just starting out. So if you are interested in more generic travel videos that aren't necessarily just cruising, but are more travel tips and places to see, you can head over there and check out Bite Size Travels. It would help us out a lot if you could do that. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you all have a great day, and I will see you next time.